Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror action film, The Outpost. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in war-torn Eastern Europe, where a group of soldiers is traveling the streets in the back of a truck. On the way to their destination, they pass by refugees and survivors of the conflict. Debris and bricks are scattered on the roadside, while barrels still on fire litter the alleys. A man named DC looks at the group of mercenaries who have been hired to assist him with this specific job. DC used to be a Marine, but is now also a mercenary. DC's employer is a businessman who enlisted their services to protect him when he enters the no man's land and investigates a piece of potentially valuable real estate property. As they make their way to no man's land, some of the crew begin to question the reasoning behind this specific job. The Blue Barret mercenary tells the crew that the details of the mission are highly suspicious and that the crew is probably being used as government guinea pigs to recover something in no man's land. The Russian mercenary expresses his distrust at their employer, but trusts DC's judgment. The crew arrives at the no man's land. DC and the employer scout ahead, while the rest of the crew stay behind in the truck. They come to a halt because of the trees that block the road. They continue on foot and scour the forest for any signs of the location they are finding. They hear an aircraft in the distance, which causes them to stop for a bit, but they continue ahead. Suddenly, their radio devices start malfunctioning, and they stop to fix their devices, but the crew is already in a state of panic. They continue on and find the outpost that the employer wanted to search for. The crew scours the area to make sure that no mines or any hostels are currently within the outpost. They break into groups to cover more areas. One of the crew members goes forward to check the entrance of the outpost. Once he tells the crew that the coast is clear, the rest soon join him at the entrance. They hurriedly take cover while making their way to the outpost entrance. They enter the outpost and quickly notice that it's run down and abandoned. They check the rooms near the entrance, but find them empty and abandoned. They use a flashlight to light the way because the electricity within the outpost is out of order. The Belgian mercenary and the British mercenary stay behind above the entrance while the rest of the crew conduct the search. A firefight erupts and the crew immediately returns to the entrance to join the two mercenaries. Their radio malfunctions again, causing miscommunication between the crew. The Belgian mercenary gets hit by a bullet and the others return fire to provide cover. A crew member scouts the place where the bullets came from, but says that no one is there and only empty shell casings were found. DC speaks with the employer about the situation and tells him that everything has been handled and they will resume the search in a while. The crew tends to the wounds of the Belgian mercenary. DC and the employer go further into the outpost and discuss its history. The crew breaks up into separate groups and conducts their respective search around the outpost. The US mercenary and another crew member stumble upon a room where they find the old living quarters and notice a rosary hanging in one of the bunk beds. The French mercenary stumbles across a live battery, which almost electrocutes him. But when they head further down, they enter a room full of pale white bodies from the previous soldiers of the outpost. The bodies suddenly wake up and attack him. He screams and alerts the other crew members, so they make their way to his location as fast as possible. They enter the room where the French mercenary was, and they see the piles of bodies in the room. The electricity inside the outpost suddenly comes back on, and the US soldier finds a projector that turns on by itself. He discovers that the outpost is a former Nazi outpost. They take one of the bodies they found in the room, which is somehow still alive. They put him up on the chair, and the crew members argue that they should just kill him. Their employer tells them that he might have some info, and DC agrees that keeping him alive might be good. DC and the employer talk in private, and he tells the employer that he must not say anything rash to the crew members, because they might resort to violence. The employer argues that he has DC do that for him. Suddenly, the crew interrupts their conversation and tells them about the history of the outpost. They take the two of them to the projector room and reveal that the outpost was once occupied by the Nazis. The crew then asks the employer if the reason why he was here is that he's looking for the lost Nazi gold. The employer leaves, and DC tells the rest of the crew that he wants them stationed outside to guard the perimeter. The crew argues, but follows his orders anyway. The French mercenary and the Russian mercenary discuss that the bodies that they found earlier were probably experimented on. The British mercenary takes the only living survivor of the bunker to a secure holding cell. The survivor remains inactive, almost as if he was lobotomized. The employer digs through the Nazi files inside the outpost and discovers a particular blue folder. He takes the folder to a room where a giant machine sits in the middle. He takes out his notebook and finds that the machine is exactly what he has been looking for. He grabs a transmitter and sends a message to someone, telling them that he has found the machine. 
The crew members stationed outside to guard the perimeter begin to talk about their former experiences in their respective fields. The U.S. mercenary makes a snide remark, which makes the Belgian mercenary leave. The British mercenary examines the survivor and engages him in conversation. The survivor stares at him vacantly, still giving no responses. He tries to get him to play chess to pass the time, but the survivor doesn't make a move. He then shows him pictures and other trinkets he found in the drawers. But when he reaches down to grab a coin, he notices that two pairs of feet stand behind the survivor. He takes out his gun, but sees that nobody is behind the survivor. DC finds him and checks up on the survivor. He tells the British mercenary to fix their communication lines. The employer works on fixing the machine, but hears sounds coming from behind him. He finds that he has been locked inside, and he feels a presence behind him. DC unlocks the door for him, which scares the smelly shit out of the employer. The US mercenary guards the survivor in place of the British mercenary. DC asks about the machine, to which the employer explains to him that the machine could potentially find the key to unify matter, and that Einstein had notes about finding the key, but he destroyed those notes because of the atomic bomb tests. He tells DC that he has come all this way because he believes that the machine could potentially manipulate a unified field and could possibly impact the technology of the modern world limitlessly. The Belgian soldier hears sounds coming from the hallway. He investigates, but is frightened by the intense screams he hears. The British soldier tries to fix the communications, but accidentally plays music across the outpost. He tries to turn it off, but cannot find the button. He unplugs the machine just in time before DC scolds him. Suddenly, the outpost is under attack. They get into an intense firefight, but the employer pays no mind to this while he fixes the machine. The winds suddenly grow strong, which makes it harder for the crew to fight. The Russian mercenary disappears in the midst of the fight. Once again, they check for the whereabouts of the enemies, but only find empty shell casings and an iron cross medal in the field. DC goes back to the outpost, and the Belgian mercenary follows him, telling him that the bullets they found could have never reached the outpost, based on the distance where the attack is coming from. He tells DC that everything about the attacks and the Iron Cross they found on the field is too suspicious. DC tells him to calm his muscles down and sends him back to the entrance. DC takes the survivor to a secluded area and threatens him. The survivor looks at him and says nothing. Despite his anger, he leaves the survivor. He then finds the employer and tells him that the ones who took the Russian mercenary left behind an Iron Cross medal. He also tells him about the strong winds and the flashing lights during the battle. The employer tells him that it is ludicrous, but DC responds by telling him that what happened earlier was unnatural and unlike anything he had encountered on the battlefield. The crew talks about what happened and expresses their desire to leave. The Belgian mercenary tells the others about his experience inside the outpost, but the US mercenary shrugs it off and tells him that he's just hearing things. The employer explains to DC that the Nazis look for every means at hand to win the war, whether it be humane or inhumane. He reveals that the scientists ran tests on soldiers here in the outpost and exposed them to the energy harnessed in the machine in order to enhance the human body. He remarks that the Nazis could have been looking to make the perfect soldier an invincible and unstoppable human that could turn the tide of war. The two of them watch the video being played on the projector and reveal that the Nazis planned to rule the world with an army of invincible soldiers. DC tells him that he is pulling the plug on the mission, but the employer reveals that he ran extensive background checks on the crew, and if they were to leave now, his bosses would hunt their families down. He also reveals to DC that another crew will be coming to the outpost to relieve them, and they are coming as fast as they can. Suddenly, DC hears screams coming from the entrance. The Russian soldier screams in the distance. A monster nails him to a tree and mutilates him as he begs for his life. The crew is deeply disturbed by the screams, but they do their best to pay no mind and focus on guarding the perimeter. Suddenly, a monster appears out of nowhere and silently kills one of the members of the crew. However, the US and French mercenaries do not notice their friend going missing. Morning comes, and they discover the bodies of two of their crew members arranged in a grotesque fashion. They understand that someone out there was sending a message to them to leave. DC tells the employer that they are leaving, despite the employer's pleading. The rest of the crew loot the bodies of their dead comrade, with as much honor as a mercenary could have. The French mercenary comes down to the outpost and confronts the employer about the situation, but the monster appears again and kills him. The crew opens fire on the monster, but it disappears into thin air. The employer tells the rest of the crew about the experiments that happened in the outpost. The US mercenary does not believe in the words of the employer. He goes outside the outpost and hangs a white flag with the number 5 in the middle. They discover that the German officer who authorized the experiments was no other than the survivor. 
So the U.S. mercenary grabs his gun and shoots the survivor in the head despite the warnings from the rest of the crew. But the survivor stands up again despite being shot in the head. The lights flicker on and off as the U.S. mercenary unloads a magazine into the survivor. When the light comes back on, they discover the U.S. mercenary dead. The Belgian mercenary punches the employer out of anger. That night, the crew plan their last stand and agree that the only hope would be for the employer to find a way to power up the machine. The survivor now assumes his role as the leader of an undead army. He orders his Nazi super soldiers to attack the crew. Despite planting explosives in the field, they are unharmed. The crew retreats inside the outpost, but the British mercenary is killed by the undead. The machine is powered up, which renders the undead soldier immobile. But the machine malfunctions, causing the soldiers to rise again, killing the Belgian mercenary. DC and the employer are the only ones that remain. DC tells the employer to run, and he tries his best to hold off the undead soldiers. But his screams echo through the outpost. The movie ends with the employer being caught by the undead Nazis. A new squad of soldiers is sent to the outpost, but when they discover the bodies inside, the undead Nazis immediately begin their attack on the outpost. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.